Start your habit of continuous learning today. Visit nomadphp.com. Welcome to Nomad PHP Lightning Talks. I'm Joe Ferguson. Nomad PHP Lightning Talks are 10-minute talks that give a high-level overview or an in-depth look at a small portion of a PHP-related topic. Lightning Talks are a great way for new speakers to build their speaking resume and for long-time speakers to test drive new talk ideas. If you'd like to give a 10-minute Lightning Talk, please email me, joe at nomadphp.com. Right now, we have Oliver Davies, and he's going to be talking about deploying PHP applications with Fabric. Oliver, take it away. Thank you, Joe. Yeah, so my name is Oliver Davis. Um, I'm going to be talking about deploying PHP applications with Fabric. Um, I'm a web developer and a Linux sysadmin. Um, I work mostly with Drupal, uh, but also with Symfony and Silex and Sculpin. Uh, and I'm a senior developer at a UK Drupal shop called Microsoft. Um, so yeah, today I'm going to be talking a little bit about Fabric. Um, it's a Python library. Uh, it's a command line tool. Um, it's essentially the SSH task runner, uh, which means that it runs commands locally and also on remote environments. It's flexible, so it's language agnostic, so I use it to deploy mostly PHP applications. Um, and it's also framework agnostic, so as I say, I use it with Drupal and Symfony and various other systems. Um, it also can be just as simple as or complex as you want to need it or want or need it to be. Um, and I use it to combine various pre-deploy and post-deploy scripts. So before I had several different shell scripts for post and pre-deploy, uh, they will be moved into one, one fabric file. So how do we install fabric? Um, you can use pip to install fabric. If you don't have pip, you can use brew if you're using Mac OS. Uh, or if you're running a Linux distro like Ubuntu or Debian, uh, you could run app get fabric or app get install Python fabric, depending on your distribution. Once it's installed, you can start building a fab file. Um, so we start by importing at the top. So similar to having PHP statements, uh, we use from fabric to API and then run import. Uh, you could wildcard it to import everything, or we can name uh, packages specifically. We can then start by building our environment. So we start by defining hosts, one or more hosts to apply to. And most times I use the SSH config file. So if I have SSH keys or username stored in my local SSH config, uh, those will get used by Fabric. And then we can start defining tasks. So we start by using DEF and then the name of the task, in this case, build, uh, with optional parameters. And then these commands are run remotely over SSH. Uh, in this case, this is our bread and butter PHP application. Uh, we're seeding into a directory, running git poll, and then running composer install on remote server. Once we've got our fab file built, we can run tasks. We do this using the fab command and then specify the name of the task, which was build. Uh, it will find a file called fabfile.py py automatically, uh, or if it's called something else or in a subdirectory, we can use dash dash fab file to tell it where the file is. Uh, we can set extra environment variables using dash dash set and chain them together. Uh, so in this case, we're using env equals prod uh, I use this a lot with Jenkins and continuous integration to pass through bill numbers environments um, into, the, into the fabric file. Um, this is fine, but we don't always want to be running Git and Composer on a remote server. So what we can do is run tasks locally using the local keyword, uh, and these will be run either on, on the host machine rather than remotely. The other thing I tend to do is building front-end assets. So this example I've taken from my Drupal themes. Uh, in this case, we've got a task called build underscore assets. And we're using a new keyword called LCD, which is a local change directory rather than uh, the remote change directory. And um, to go into our theme directory. And then once we're in there to run two commands locally, we can use yarn to install our NPM uh, dependencies. Uh, and then run Bower to install of our front end dependencies. Um, in this case, then we've passed through another environment variable for called environment. So env.env env equals prod. 
uh, and then depending on whether what the environment is, we can run gulp build or gulp build dash production. So once you build locally, we can then push the code. So I've defined what my project root is, uh, which is var www.html. Uh, there's a task called deploy, and in most cases, I just use rsync. Uh, this is provided by the fabric contrib directory. Uh, we can specify use fabric underscore project. And we can type the local directory uh, where the remote directory is. Um, percentage s is very similar to using um, Sprint F in PHP uh, with a slightly different syntax. Um, so project root gets interpreted um, there and adds slash web to the end. Um, we could exclude the .git directory and node modules because we don't need those on the remote server. And we can pass through some default options there as well. Um, once we've got that done, uh, we can run, I tend to run Drush uh, for Drupal or Symfony Console or Laravel Allison commands remotely, um, ensuring correct file permissions on the remote server. Uh, update synlinks, synlinks. So if you're doing a capture on a type of deployment, we've got multiple versions checked out and then you're symlinking it to the current one. Uh, we can do that remotely. And restarting web servers uh, or PHP FPM remotely. Also. Uh, and essentially, anything we can do on the command line, uh, we can do with that file. That's the last one, Joe. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, let me check our C real quick and see if we have any questions. I don't think we do. We don't. Excellent. Awesome. Thank you very much. Uh, I am going to take back presenter. All right, thanks for joining us for another Nomad PHP Lightning Talk. If you'd like to give a Lightning Talk, please email me, joe at nomadphp.com. 